Hello and welcome back to the lab. Continuing on with our restoration of this 475A. I need to get into the trigger section. I've got the first sensitivity wired up. I did need a CT3 to check this and some GR874 connectors. So what we should see is if I move this, it should trigger somewhere in there, and it does not. So the trigger is not sensitive enough. So we do need to do trigger sensitivity adjustments as I wait for a soldering iron to warm up. I was arguing with the external trigger. The external trigger is not going to work when it's not connected. I have to from taking the trigger boards out, doing all the troubleshooting, I have to resolder the pins for the BNCs. So I will do that, and we will be right back. Okay, in adjusting the sensitivity, we have a maximum of 0.2, which is what we're looking for. Um, our 565 was out just a little bit, not horribly. So now what we need to do is we need to chest test to make sure we don't have the trigger too sensitive. So what we need to do is we need to run this up to normal, go to norm, go to channel 2, and right there we have a trace. We shouldn't because we have no signal coming in on channel 2, so I need to back the sensitivity off just a little bit till that goes away. It's very close. It's kind of fluttering on that uh, tunnel diode, so what we're going to do is we're just going to pull a little bit out so it's off, and now we check, rotate this through its entire range, making sure a yeah, little bit more. Perfect. No triggering and no trace. Now we just reset up the scope. External auto. Now I need four divisions of display. I'm gonna wind that. Actually, we're going to need to bounce this up a range. There's three. There's four. Okay. Minus and a triggered display. Okay, I have a short installed on the back of the trigger controls so the level set doesn't do anything anymore. It's all based on this now. But as we can see, Our symmetry is not quite right, so I need to adjust 547. Okay, this calibration step now makes sense. This is kind of confusing, actually. So the important part of the jumper is to not disturb the trigger level control once it hits. So what they want is we're on the negative slope, so the start of the negative sweep at 0.7, they want 0.7 divisions of overlap. So that means the negative sweep starts 0.7 divisions high, the positive sweep starts 0.7 divisions low. So in this case, we've got the trigger set up for the negative, so what we need to do is short the switch to pot so we can view the positive. And then we adjust our 547, which is the center potentiometer for the trigger, until we start 7 divisions low. And then symmetry set up. Now, if centering is a little off, you'll bounce back and forth for a while and it won't uh, it'll kind of 
be a little strange. But um, we adjust trigger centering in the next step, so here we go. Okay, so for trigger centering, we had to center the knob. It's not triggered, so our centering is off, which is as expected. So now we adjust R534. For a triggered display, but I want it right out of the middle, just like that. Now we have a very small waveform, which is expected, but I wanted the uh, waveform to start right at the center of the scope. Now we have to move this proboscis of a test probe to the B channel. So what this is, is this is a signal pickoff into a 10X attenuator into a 50 ohm terminator. I happen to have the right gender GR connector to make this setup work without any cables. So that's what we ran with. Okay, and it's the exact same setup. Probably going to do the exact same thing. So we need to back this down to need to up the trigger sensitivity. Let me go back to A real quick just to set up my wave shape. Actually, we want to fuzz this out because that makes it easier to fuzz that out because it makes it easier to set the envelope. We need 3.5. That's going to be about 3.5 right there. Kick this up to 20. Turn this back to be delayed. Need to back off the sensitivity just a little bit. Yeah, right there. Actually, this centering is pretty good. Eh, the centering's not, but the sensitivity is, because I'm on dead on zero. I should be down here, and I'm not, so I'll have to adjust the... Uh... Yeah, we didn't get to zero. Yeah, that's looking better. So I needed to bump up the sensitivity a little bit. Okay, same trick as before. So we wind this up. And we short some pins. Actually, wait, we flip over to negative. And it's starting a little high. So we flip some pins. And... Do it. There's point seven. Oops. Short it. Seven. All right. And now we need to do symmetry. I 
I'm going to move the centering just a bit because it's kind of on the low side. So we're just going to bring it up to the center. And there we go. Actually, it looks like uh, DC centering is fine. So I do not need to mess with that. Oh, wait. That's A triggered. Yeah, stable display. A is fine. And we want to check channel 2. This needs to be at 0.5. And I do trigger in the display area, so that's all it wants to check, which is fine. And we want to go to B trigger. And move this down to DC as well. And we do trigger inside the, actually centering between the two channels is almost perfect. And channel one. That also looks good. Actually, the DC centering can come down just a touch. On that, so... Let's see, DC centering, R403. Okay. This one may not actually have it, because I'm not seeing R403 in the schematic. That might be a later addition. Uh, wants us to check internal 40 megahertz triggering. We're triggering fine at 40 megahertz. No problems at all. Channel one. Yeah, no problems at all. 250 megahertz. Actually, we're in even better shape because we're triggering on a very small signal, so that is great. And we're good there. Let's see, external triggering. Got A at 250. Do we have B at 250? We do have B at 250. So if we have 250, we're going to have 40. But we can just double check. Because we can.
There's 40. And how well does this trigger do? We'll just wind this down until we lose it. Better than that range. So those tunnel diodes are fine. A is triggering just fine. Let's see. High frequency reject. Low frequency reject kills it. High frequency reject. Or low frequency reject. If we dial this back, I should lose it. I do. That's 50 kilohertz, so the low frequency reject is working. And that's 40 megahertz. The high frequency reject goes away. And let's check the high frequency and low frequency reject of B trigger. Be delayed. So we are on external low frequency reject. We have it. But if I, yeah, if I wind this back to 50 kilohertz, we lose it. Wind this back up to 40 megahertz, high frequency reject, we lose it. So that is also working on channel two. Okay, that was kind of short compared to the uh, vertical section of this scope, but the trigger section is all tuned up. In the next video, we're going to take a look at, uh, actually, I have to be done with the 475's alignment manual now because this has a DM4400. So in the next video, we will do the alignment of the DM4400, but that will also include the horizontal alignment of the scope because in this particular configuration, I have to use the horizontal out of the piggyback DM. So everything's going good. This one's continuing to progress, progress, and we are moving forward. So I'm going to have to warm up lots of the lab to do this alignment because I got, I'm going to have to start up the voltage standards, probably the uh, key, probably the source meter, definitely the uh, DM7510 because I'm going to have to do a meter alignment on this and the time base alignment on this. But that will finally finish this scope up. So once we get through that alignment, this, this guy will actually be done. So lots more to do, but getting towards the home stretch. So thanks for joining us in the lab. And as always, I will see everybody in the next video. More is always on the way.